Okay, so welcome B. Thanks for joining me to talk about crystals and being an empath and all sorts of good stuff. It's lovely to meet you. Um, I'll just introduce myself in case there are people here who haven't met me as well. So my name's Tabitha. I'm an integrated healer and well-being consultant working online. Um, I actually live on a boat in between Bristol and Bath. And B is a crystal expert and I believe you're a healer as well and a fellow sensitive and empathic person who can pick up on interesting energies. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's lovely to be here. Really looking, looking forward to tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, you want me to introduce a little bit or tell everybody a little bit more about myself and what I do, just a, a quick yeah, absolutely. And that kind of, so yeah, so I'm I'm B. It's been really lovely to have been invited to um, do an interview with Tabitha or Tams, um, and yeah, it was really nice to just um, be asked to talk about crystals. So I've been working with crystals for a long, long time, crystal healer. Um, I'm a Reiki master, live in Cornwall, and um, yeah, really love working with crystals and doing my stuff with them. So I think it's going to be a lovely evening. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, first I wanted to ask you how you first kind of made a connection with crystals or how you got interested in crystal mm. healing. Yeah. Well, I've always had a connection with crystals since I was a child. So um, I was one of those crazy kids who would come back with loads of little pebbles. And if they would just have a tiny, teeny little geode in them and a little bit of glistening and, you know, the little quartz um, bits that would be just shining out, I would bring them home, much to my mum's despair because I had loads of pebbles and rocks um, in my room. And then when I kind of got old enough to have my own pocket money and that kind of thing, um, we would go on holiday to places where you'd have the odd crystal cavern, cave, shop, that kind of thing. I would always be going in there and getting crystals. And that's kind of grown over the years. Um, then obviously you have this kind of um, diversion, I think, that we all go through from childhood into adulthood and you start to concentrate more on life, basically, and just, you know, making your way into job, career and all that kind of thing. So I lost touch with all of that a little bit, even though I stayed really spiritual uh, throughout. And then in 20, uh, 2008, I did my Reiki um, first grade. And that kind of just opened that journey up again. And then from 2012, I actually worked in a shop that where we sold crystals. It was a gallery, but we sold crystals as well. And um, that was really where I began to really get into the matter again and um, started reading up loads. I, I always had them in the background, but that's when they really came back into my life. Did a two-year course with Atcho, um, with the lovely Sue Weaver of the um, Cornwall School of Crystal Healing. And then since then, I've kind of been self-employed, working with the crystals, healing with the crystals. And it's just grown over the years now. So it's, you know, it's always been there. It's just life that kind of got in the way here and there. But then since 2012, really, um, they've been a real big feature in my life again. And I don't think they're going to go away again now. <laughs> no, I think they they always call you back, the same as the healing. You've always kind of led back to the to the path, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when it's really, when it's when it really resonates in you, so when you are a healer or you're a, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of healer, whether it's a crystal healer or a reiki or something, it, because it's part of your core, um, it calls you back no doubt every time you just get called back and it's you know it doesn't matter where you go whether it's in shops or you know life situations like oh crystals they just get presented don't mm. they and it's like hello yeah <laughs> just get back. put in your path <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah okay and um so how have, have, he, have crystals helped you to stay balanced are there maybe any sort of experiences that stand out or 
is there any way that you kind of um you know that you regularly work with crystals just mm. to help your own balance whether that's connecting for information or just balancing your energy field or feeling calm or anything like that mm. I think it's pretty safe to say that crystals have been um, a really big part of my self-inquiry practice over the years so um, and you probably know as well Tabs as a highly sensitive life can get really overwhelming sometimes um, and I've really noticed that throughout my life in general where whenever I was really lost stuck I always came back to the crystals in general so it was like you know they were always being put back in my path but since 2015 um, I split up from my then partner and I was in what you would probably call the dark night of the soul um, for a good three years I was I was really um, searching for myself trying to rediscover who am I what am I here all the big questions and I, I really began to work with the crystals on a really intense level. So I would sit with them, meditate with them, journal with them. And just before I'd finished my, my actual course, and in, in those beautiful two years, I learned certain practices which really helped me to connect to the crystals on a much deeper level. And I'll show you part of that later in, in, uh, when, we, when we go along. So I'll, I'll just show you how to connect and, and really get some messages from them. <laughs> So over the years, because I began to really sit quietly with the crystals and meditation and they basically just talked to me. So I would either channel them and they would tell me what they would do for me or I would get these amazing experiences where I would go and sit quietly with them in meditation. And I would have I think the best way I can describe them is crystal journeys. So I it, it's almost like a shamanic journey where I would. Um, go on a meditation, but you're you're being taken to places, to sceneries, to um, your guides, your angels, where quite an exchange takes place, and you then also commune with the crystal uh, and its particular healing properties, and that is really what helped me then begin to understand part of myself and my journey. So. Um, when I sat with the crystals and, and um, I wanted answers to certain questions or trying to understand what is hurting me in that moment in time, I would sit with the crystal and I would be shown certain situations, sometimes timeline hopping. So you would go right back and, and be shown this thing that happened to you then and then that's part of where you lost part of your soul. This is trauma that's unresolved. You need to work on it. So it's those situations that kind of um, were presented to me in, in deep meditation with the crystals. Um, and that became just part of my practice. And um, that is really what my journey with crystals has been about, is this really, really deep connection on a soul level where they, A, gave me this what I would probably call the healing over soul. So, you know, as every crystal has a particular healing energy, which most books write about, that's their kind of over soul. But there was always a deeper message for me as well, where I would be working with that particular energy and be showing things that were really, um, really particular to me. Mm. It's wonderful, isn't it? I think um, I've had a few experiences like that as well with crystals where... Mm. It's very much how they connect with you and and your path or your own higher self and help to bring that information through or kind of amplify that connection um, and also with other realms as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really quite magical. Okay. It's very powerful, I think, and it's when you when you're working with crystals on that level. So I mean, you know, most of us get drawn to crystals because. They have a particular colour, they have a particular energy that is drawing us into them. And, you know, that, that's one part, but it's quite a, um, I don't I don't want to say it's superficial, but it is a kind of superficial way of working with them because you just kind of, you know, oh yeah, like moonstone or rose quartz, we all know what they kind of do. But it is when you really commune with a crystal and really go into them and you get that, like you say, where you, you begin to channel very... Um, important information for yourself through your higher self your 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 guides it just becomes this amazing journey and that's 
where, where I think their true, true healing lies. Um, you know, I, I often get asked about, oh, can you give me a crystal for um, whatever, um, headaches or, you know, tummy ache, et cetera. And, mm. and so crystals can work very well on physical issues, but I always find that crystals in general just have this amazing energy to work on a very, very deep soul level. And that is their true gift to us. That's where their true light shines for us. Yeah, I always think to just pick the one that you're drawn to for whatever the issue is, rather than, you know, trying to find an orange one for the sacral chakra or, you know, following what's written in books. Like you say, that's a that's a kind of over a yeah. picture of, of generally how they help. But they can be it's almost like they're they're like a key, whether it's connecting you to kind of release the emotion or I've had ones that I've held um and I've kind of tested where on the body my body wants it and then it's been like it's, it's been like quite a physical feeling a physical mm. healing or a release of energy from you know from my energy circuit and I've not really known what's happened but being an empath I felt it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and exactly. thought, okay that feels better um, yeah. I'm not really sure what happened but it unlocked whatever it needed to do it did yeah. the job kind of thing so almost like it's just right finding the right key for the thing and that's it's like a different one a on a different really day way to describe it in fairness it is it's that unlocking and it's like a key and it, and it, it just does this yeah wonderful thing for you and you think oh I don't quite know what happened there but it's just done the job so yeah yeah amazing like that so uh, maybe tell us about because I've watched your um I found you on Facebook and one of your crystal markets popped up and I was like ooh lovely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, you were sort of in midstream um, and and because you you know so much about the crystals and literally mm. like about the beings of the crystals that you're selling mm. as well. Um, and then I heard you talk about you, you get your, so you have a crystal market every Saturday um, yeah. online where you yeah. can purchase, but also, but it's just so fascinating because you tell us about the crystals as you go and you've just got so much knowledge um and the crystals are sourced maybe tell us where they're sourced from because i know there's a, there's some quite unethical practices going on with crystals being kind of you know taken out of the earth yeah. where they shouldn't be and things like that and i know that you it's only two sources that you get your crystals from and they're yeah mm. and they're from good yeah good with, sources. yeah right. so the, the markets are every saturday night and um i'm just it's one of those things that I, I'm really conscientious about. A, obviously, the mining practices. So I do only get um, the crystals from two sources in the UK. And both these sources know exactly where the crystals come from. They work with either very small families and support them in that way, where there is uh, absolutely no child labour involved. Um, and the crystals are ethically mined. And let's just go into ethically mining um, because it's one of those trendy terms that a lot of people actually um, like to use. Things are ethical when it's done with respect um, and, you know, and not um, in such a way that it harms nature in an awful way. Nothing's restored. So the crystals that we source are um, from small mining sites um, where there's only hand mined. So there's no there's no strip mining. Strip mining is when big, vast areas are blown away um, okay. and then you know gathered what they can. A lot of the crystals are actually a side product as well. So it's like diamond mining, for example. They just want the diamonds, but there are a lot of other minerals in the mines that are then ethically gathered as well in the process. Um, and yeah, and like I said, the other thing that's really important is a that the families who actually work in the mines get a very good, reasonable wage and they're looked after. Um, they get fed um, through the businesses and uh, have good housing and you no know, child labour. So that's really important to us as well. So that's uh, and these two people or these two wholesaler that I work with they know exactly where every stone comes from they know the families they go there themselves they source them themselves so they know exactly what the practices are um, because they've been to the mines themselves so that's one thing that's really important to me the other thing that's really important to me um, and that's why I try and do what I do in the markets is crystal beings to me are just another expression of um, consciousness. They are um, an entity 
a, 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 an energy form that lives, that grows, that expresses itself in the frequency that it actually um, emits. And they, to me, are immense teachers that need to be, um, I guess, treated respectfully as if they are spirit beings. That's how I would approach anyone anyway. But so for me, yeah. it's really important that people who buy crystals, A, know that they're ethical, but it's also really important that um, they know a little bit about the crystal and they're not just taking the crystal because it's shiny, but I want to educate people about what they are and um, what a gift they are to us. So a lot of people, you know, just go and, and just gather as many as they can because it's kind of the in thing to do at the moment and I'm really trying to say but really treat the crystal um, as it is a spiritual being and um, you know it has this beautiful gift to give to you and that's why I kind of explain about them as well so really trying to um, tell people about what they do um, and um, yeah just trying to be a little bit different in it all as well so yeah, yeah. trying to um educate people I think that's the word yeah I, I think I'm letting some of mine kind of live outside now because I feel yeah. like they need to be yeah. outside the boat and um, yeah. they sort of can come in but then they need they need refreshing more often than I realized I think <laughs> and to be actually in that connection of uh, the earth energy of the, yeah of the of the seasons of the light of it's, yeah it's, um it's one of the things that I really began to understand when I worked with the crystals on a much deeper level is that they do ask for these things because of their um emotional world I guess you know they need to be back out in the wind and the rain and the and the elements every now and then to recharge and discharge as well because they discharge through the earth um, and just regenerate and recoup, you know, as human beings do sometimes. They just need to be left alone and just do their thing. And um, I mean, I've taken crystals when we were moved when we moved to Greece a couple of years ago. Um, there were crystals who just stayed outside all the time because they were so. They before they'd been in a in a very small Cornish cottage, which was quite dark, and they were just begging for the sunshine. You know, it was all clear quartz, and they just they just stayed outside for a good one and a half years. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that's, that comes to mind? I've just thought of. Um, I just remembered an experience I had as well when I was doing some earth healing. You know, over a decade ago now with another woman and um I've got a little cathedral quartz that wanted to come along so I just checked mm. which ones wanted to come along and that one was a real it wanted to kind of ground the energy that we were doing in certain areas and um one time I came back and it had a being with it it had collected a being yeah <laughs> from a tree that wanted to help with the earth healing and oh, so it wow. came back with the crystal yes so again like that's that's quite precious isn't it it's like that's a responsibility like <laughs> some you know with I, I don't feel it was there all the time but it was then connected to that and it could yeah. it would be there when I did the, the healing so that was yeah. quite interesting as well it's like well I've got a bonus now with my crystal <laughs> <laughs> you've got a little a little tree being working yeah. yeah some kind of elemental energy yeah it was... yeah I think some crystals um are, have that natural tendency anyway because they are very elemental in their in their frequency so they tend to and they really like working with elementals and you know um, enhancing the energies and they kind of bounce off each other so um, it's it's a really lovely thing that happens with crystals sometimes I mean I do it a lot obviously with the crystal grids that I create as well oh, your so, grids I can't believe yes. I didn't mention oh my god no, don't don't worry. Get over there and yeah. see that <laughs> your grids are so beautiful yeah, yeah. I, I tried to take a photograph and put it on my page to show but it, it didn't work but yeah head over can, now because yeah, I can thank you so they're but, so yeah. beautiful because they're yeah, they are with flowers and things of nature yeah. as well the colors yeah just yeah. stunning yeah it's interesting because that's kind of a process that started in 2012 as well I was one of the first people who really got seriously into gridding and, and was sharing about it a little bit more as well so for me that's 
it's it has so many aspects so first of all it was for me working with the crystals getting to know them and just this magic that happens once you put different crystals together and and the energy that kind of grows from that that was something that I was really fascinated with and I just loved exploring that kind of um, creating portals because that's what they are crystal grids are portals that ground energies or create energies or open up energies that's probably the best way to do and then ground it into the crystalline grid in the earth and um, so you know that has become a really strong practice for me over the years that has grown so in the beginning you know I was looking through um, Instagram actually the other day the very prim beginnings it's not on my current Instagram page but obviously on Facebook you can go back years um, how you know I started off with kind of four six stones together and now how it's grown and how I've integrated you know bits of nature there's always bits of nature floating around on my desk as well because <laughs> I always pick up things and then they create a, mm. an idea or you know I can begin to see a grid um, and like you I use them for earth healing I, I use them for personal healing I use them for um, healing for others so that's mainly my way of doing my healing work now, um, whether it's earth healing or personal healing. I work with the grids really. So that's that's a practice that's grown. And again, it's a practice that's really held me um, over the years because it is almost like a meditation when you work with that and you begin to see the stones fall um, into place on the on the grid board. I always use a, a wooden grid board um, to to hold uh, the energy. And it's just beautiful to see that unfold and the energy that reaches so many people who then see this pop up on their screen um, when I do them and, and the response from that, you know, oh, that is so beautiful. And thank you just for that little beam of healing energy that's come across. Yeah, so absolutely. It's like they're, it's, they're, they're pieces of artwork as well as, you know, the, the yeah, it is a creative without the energies that are all going well as, along, which is incredible. That, yeah, they're yeah. so so pretty. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's another lovely way to be working with crystal. Um, that is, you know, almost amplified from the kind of normal healing practice that we just sit with one crystal. You're beginning to play with the energies of the different crystals and the colors and and the you know, and then by adding bits of nature, you just create something completely new that is um, sometimes mind-blowing actually I, I find it amazing what appears all of a sudden and it and it and that too creates a connection so you know and, it, and it's very powerful so yeah love doing them yeah it's wonderful yeah okay so um you had a special offer as well for people yeah. on my yeah, page yeah, exactly. um, a little code yeah, so if you go uh, to our webpage, which is www.crystalsandstardust.com, um, so for all you lovely people who are on Tabitha's group, um, if you use the code Tabitha24, or uppercase, and then just 24, all one word, Tabitha24, you'll get 10% off on our um, website for any purchases you make there. Um, it's unlimited at the moment I haven't really set a time on that so you can just use it whenever you stumble across this video um and um yeah just put it in at the end on the checkout and it'll take 10% off for you so yeah thank you that's really generous yeah you're welcome no it's really nice and are your markets at the same time on Saturday or does it vary is it kind of morning or evening no at the moment um we still <laughs> We're still kind of playing a little bit with our times because we did Friday evenings. We used to do Fridays and Sundays, but being a highly sensitive, etc., um, I'm struggling with energy levels sometimes. So because I've got fibromyalgia, so we kind of um, put it down to um, just Saturday evenings at the moment um, because. Yeah, like I said, my energy levels aren't brilliant at the moment, but we're really hoping to go back to two nights in the weekend. So it might probably, it might be Friday nights, Saturday nights or Saturday nights, Sunday nights, but it's always at seven o'clock. 
So um, just, but if you go on the page, either on crystalsandstardust.com or you go onto the Facebook page, you'll see notifications of the next markets popping up there anyway. And from mid-September, because we've got a really busy time coming up um, for the next couple of weeks, but from middle of September, we're really hoping to be back two nights um, in a row over the weekend. But you'll see how and when on the Facebook page as well. So just look for Crystals and Stardust there, or I'm sure um, Tabitha's got the link there as well somewhere on the page. And uh, yeah, come and join us. We'd love to see you. Okay, yeah, I'll make sure that I put the links in wherever the wherever the video yeah, is you. underneath as well, all, all of our links and the Circle of Light community as well. Yeah. Um, but this was supposed to go out to this evening, but we had so many. <laughs> I know. It's so sad we didn't. <laughs> we're not <laughs> live with everybody. It's four o'clock this afternoon, haven't we? So yeah, it's yeah. Um, couldn't go live on the page or the group or via via Streamyard either. So it was like yeah. okay, we'll just record it and then we'll people it. will get it. <laughs> yeah, send it absolutely. out later. So yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Is there anything else? that you'd like to mention or I don't know um I think I've kind of yeah I could t- I mean gosh once I get started I could talk about crystals forever <laughs> but shall we yeah. um I I promised earlier shall we um do a little meditation where I can show you how to connect to crystals deeper so that's just for your for your group then and that'd um, be lovely we'll just go and play a little bit and um yeah hopefully that will give everyone kind of um yeah, just a way into a deeper connection with crystals. So cool, we'll do that. So um, I'm just, I've got just a couple of crystals here, but I'm just going to work with a simple little clear quartz here. So just showing that little blade of light. And um, what I do when I work with a crystal, and I really, really want to get to know it. Um, like I said earlier, I treat them like beings. So um, this is this is a, a little being to me, and, and I'm very respectful of them. So when you want to connect with something, um, we do it as humans as well. The first thing you always want to do is really look at something, isn't it? So looking mindfully at something so you can really get to know it and really get into it. So the first thing I do when I really want to connect to a crystal is just really look at it and just see whether you can see any rainbows, any veils, anything that really comes, you know, to mind for you. And just really taking the crystal in. And then when you've done that and you have really connected on every level with it, I then take the next step where I take my eyes away and really go into the crystal or with the senses or the rest of the senses, let's put it that way. So close your eyes and just hold the crystal for a moment and just become aware of its energy in your hand. So just holding it between your fingers and just begin to really feel the crystal Physically, as in, is it sharp? Has it got any edges? Is it smooth? What's the texture like? All those things. Just really beginning to feel. And once you begin to feel, you begin to pick up more of the energy as well. And then when you've done that, just hold it in the palms of your hands. So often I will just have it in my um, in the prayer position. When it's a small crystal, I just hold it like this. Or you can just have it cut in your hand, in your lap, and just really become aware of its energy in the palm of your hand. And then I will actually close my eyes again and introduce myself to the crystal diva. So I will literally say something like, hello, my name is Thee. I would be really grateful if you could share with me tonight uh, something that I need to learn from you. Um, This may be a healing to receive or a personal message, but I'd be honoured to receive your healing. And then when you've done that, I just sit with it quietly and I become hyper aware of my surroundings. So um, when you're really in a meditative state with a crystal, 
you begin to really focus inward and you listen with your whole being. So any physical changes, any changes in your mood, any changes in your thoughts, any changes of your energetic field can then begin to come through to you. So when you just sit with it quietly and you close your eyes and you just check in with yourself and then you connect to the crystal and just see what changes arise. So for me, I have a clear quartz. I don't know what you have. I think you've got selenite, haven't you? Yes, I've got a rose quartz. Rose quartz, okay, rose quartz heart. So for me, you know, when I work with um, clear quartz, I always get this strong alignment in my body. It's expansive. My mind becomes laser sharp. It's all these little things that you just pick up on. So, and I just let that happen and I just ask, show me what I need to know. And then once I've done that in my hand, I will then move the crystal on to the next chakra, which is one of the most important ones to read in general, which is your heart. So I then move it from my palm and in the, in the cup, I will move it to my heart and just do exactly the same again and just listen with my whole body and just see what happens there. And then after a while, I'll do the same again and I'll do it on my third eye. And then when I've done that whole process and I've received the messages and the healing that I need, I just take the crystal down I thank it for what it's shown to me and disconnect from the energy. The reason why I do these three steps, um, and um, it's, it's my lovely teacher who's, who's taught me this way, which um, I just value so much, is some crystals speak louder on different parts of the body. So it's things, really. for example, like, um, you know, a clear quartz will usually speak a lot louder on the heart and the third eye than on your lower chakras when you've had your hands. And vice versa, very often, if you have a really dense crystal, which is really about grounding and, and being really strongly in yourself and in the earth, you'll get less up here, but you'll get a lot more down from the heart and on the lower body. So it's a really... Um, beautiful process to take yourself through when you're sitting with a crystal so just coming home to yourself really tuning in quieting your mind and then connecting to the crystal in that way the messages that come through I do it in my in my um in my crystal study group as well um it's amazing and people are always so surprised to see how much of a difference it makes to place the crystals on the different centers as well, the energetic centers um, with what comes through. So it's it's a lovely way, try it and keep doing it and you'll grow with you know, the, the messages and the energies that come through. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Lovely. So um, yeah, so you have a study group as well. That's yes. really interesting. So people could find out about that. Is that on your website? Yeah, you can. Um, if you just go under um, my events, I do several things, actually. I do a journaling group, um, a meditation group will come up soon as well. But I do a monthly crystal study group where um, each month we pick a different crystal and we come together like this in a Zoom meeting. And we do exactly the process that we've gone through. I actually send you the crystals as well. So I source them and I send them to you beforehand. Um, and then we just join in circle. And then the beauty of that is that everybody shares their experience. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get stuff through where you think, oh, am I just going slightly mad or something? And then within the group, it's like, oh, I've experienced something really similar. So it kind of confirms, A, you're not going slightly mad. And B, it, it shows you that the symbolism that the crystals show us to understand their healing properties um, are very similar to many of us. And all of a sudden you begin to trust what the crystal is giving you is that, you know, we often have this um, kind of um, doubt, haven't we, when something happens and you think, oh, no, I'm imagining that or, you know, how crazy is that? Or um, And when you work in a group and you have different people saying, well, actually, it did something similar for me, you have that confirmation that you're reading it right and you become more confident in um, using crystals and understanding their healing. 
yeah definitely I think the groups are great for that for feedback yeah. and uh yeah and not it stops you yeah. from just being on your own and second guessing what's going on as well yeah exactly yeah so, that's lovely yeah, you do you do the whole package of crystals and send it out as well yeah. that's really nice yeah, yeah yeah so I just I so yeah it's I'm, I'm, like I said it's only uh, uh, one crystal per group obviously so once a month but yeah so um I'm just thinking I think I don't think I've got anything here that's similar um but yeah you'll get a reasonable sized you know galley per session um and the the really interesting thing has been that uh, in the beginning everybody wanted to you know have the rarer minerals and you know the more exciting ones but I really started the group with the basics so I started with clear quartz rose quartz smoky quartz amethyst is the next one um and everybody was like no we just want to come back to all those you know stones that all of us have and they're probably sitting on a shelf somewhere and we're not connecting enough because we just think, oh, it's just a race court. So it's just, you know, and really going through the process that I just explained, they've just had such a, um, a, a bigger experience of understanding the healing properties of that particular crystal that they really come back and were excited about coming back to the more mundane ones, as I call them. But they're not. They're just amazing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah lovely mm. okay all right yeah so I don't know whether you've um, got any more questions or not don't think so that was absolutely fascinating thank you so much for sharing yeah. thank you yeah thank and, you for inviting um, me and having me it's been lovely yeah that's good um so yeah I'll put all the links in underneath I'll share this on my youtube channel as well as my yes. um yeah. i could probably put it on my page as well as yeah you. and then i can um, share it over as well That's yeah crazy. yeah so um if you want to find either of us we shall be here and all the links will be here to see what we what we do excellent great and um yeah enjoy doing the meditation and discovering more about crystals and about yourself yeah okay thank you you're welcome. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Have a nice evening. And you.